Would you like to learn how to cluster rocket motors like these and get successful ignition? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, my name is Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'd like to talk about how to successfully cluster rocket motors. Now, the big trick here is not in the motors, not in the igniters, but in the launch controller, and specifically the battery in your controller. Now here I have a Sky launch controller that we sell here at Apogee, and the this is not a good mode, uh, controller for clustering, and the reason is it doesn't have enough voltage and enough current to really kick off the igniters really quick, and that's the secret. You need a lot of power. Um, we recommend um, some of our other controllers for clustering. Uh, we have the Estes controller, which is good for um, black powder motors. Um, if you're going to do high power motors uh, and composite motors, we have either the GoBox controller from Pratt Hobbies or the Interlock controller from Aerotech. These are 12 volt controllers and they really will kick off the igniter. So here I got um, just two igniters um, and I've just twisted the leads together and what I want to show you if you look at the heads um, when I hook them up and I'll put in the key here and then when I push the button, they don't light up, uh, which means that there's not getting enough current in there. So let me just do one by itself. Let me just disconnect. Okay, so it's this, this uh, little one right here that we're gonna look at. So you wanna push the button, see how nice and red hot that glows really quick. When I did two, it didn't even glow. So that tells me that I just don't have enough current to ignite the igniters because it's the igniter that ignites the motor. So get that straight first. You need a lot of power. These just don't have enough batteries in them. This is six volt. Uh, the Estes one is nine volts. Uh, and then the other ones are 12 volts. So you can see the more power you have, the faster the igniters are gonna go and the quicker you're gonna launch. Now, uh, as far as the Estes igniters go, uh, when you first get them, they are bare nit nitrochrome, and then they put a little, um, I don't know what it is, like a shellac on them just to hold them together so that they're a little bit more durable so you can play around with them. Uh, what I do with all my Estes igniters is I dip them in the quick burst dip, um, and it's a, it's a dip that you mix up and it gives you a little bit of pyrogen on the tip. And I, I usually do this at least a day before so that it has a really good chance to dry. Um, and then when you hook it up, instead of glowing, you're gonna get a flame. So if you're gonna use the Estes ones for clustering, um, I would recommend the quick dip. See that? Whew. Lots of smoke, lots of fire. And that's really going to get that motor going quick because that's what you want. You want all the motors in the cluster to go really fast. Um, so that's my first tip if you're using the Estes igniters. Now you can use these bare. Um, so on this rocket here, we have um, just two motors. Um, and to hook these up, you put one uh, igniter in each and you'll use, use the igniter plugs. Now when you get the igniter plugs, um, it always leaves this little tip on there. Uh, make sure that the tip is not on the serrated part here. Um, you can remove it, but you know it, it can stay on the back. But you're going to need um, the plugs and the igniters. Um, then put your igniter in. Now when I put my igniter in, look the direction. I have it parallel to where the motors are right here. Um, and there's a reason for that. Um, and then put the plug in from the opposite side. Like that. Now you can spin the motors around 
which is fine. As you can see, I can, I can, I can rotate it around here. Um, so if you don't do it properly the first time, you can just rotate it around. It doesn't hurt. It's always harder to do this upside down. I recommend when you put igniters in that you stand the motor up like this. Um, that way gravity helps you and pushes the igniter all the way down to the propellant. And then put in your plug. Like that, okay. And see now when I when I rotate them around, so it doesn't want to rotate very well. Okay. Um, I will need to twist the wires together. So here's my wires, and I'll just twist them together like this. I always recommend starting with, if you're going to do clusters, start with a two engine cluster first. It kind of gets you in the practice of twisting together igniters. Um, and then make sure my key's out because now i got live motors and I don't want to ignite them off here inside the building. Um, so then you'll hook up one clip to each of the igniter bundles like that. And just make sure that they don't touch each other. Um, and then Again, I wouldn't use this controller, but I'm just using the clips, okay? So don't use that controller. It's a great controller for just one motor at a time, but not, not good for clusters. Okay, so now this, this is all wired up and ready to go. All right, so then when you'll, you'll launch it, you'll get it back. Now, this rocket here has a cluster of three motors. Um, and again, you can use the Estes igniters Um, I'm going to need some plugs. Okay. I need one more plug. Okay, so now we'll drop the igniter in. Just make sure that that they're not touching here inside. And again, I like to put the plug in. Oops, that one kind of slid forward. Okay, so now I have the plug on the outside. So here's the center of the rocket. The igniter goes towards the inside. The plug goes towards the outside. It just gives you a little bit more room to work with. Finally, here's my third igniter. Like that. Okay, so now we need to take, this is a little bit trickier, we need to take one wire from each and twist them together. So one bundle is going to have three wires in it. So I'm going to take that igniter Okay, so I've got one from each igniter, and I'm going to twist them together. Okay, and now this, I'm going to have on this one here, ideally what I want to do is to take these and twist them together as well. So you can, but it's really tricky, you got to make sure that none of these wires touch that center bundle, because otherwise that one igniter that is touching is going to short out and you're not going to get a launch. So, so I could twist it together like this. And you have to really inspect it, inspect all those wires. And I'd have to get on my glasses to make sure that nothing is touching in there. So I got two bundles that I can hook up my clips to. Um, yeah, nothing is touching that I can see. I always leave the paper on because that kind of gives you a little bit of extra insulation. Now, if you do have it where it's touching, let me undo this bundle here. Okay, take that bundle apart and I can twist these two together, but now I have three wires, 
three bundles. And I need a complete path, so I need, I need these two to go to the same clip. Um, and that's where a clip whip comes in, and these were popular many years ago. Um, and on this clip, I have this single wire goes to this side, and then these two wires go to the other wire over here. Okay, so then I could clip this here like this, and that one like that. So both of those go to the same wire. And then I take my third one and go to the center. And again, make sure that none of your clips are touching down here. And then I could just take my controller clips and just hook up over here. And this is called a clip whip. Okay. Now the problem comes in when you don't have a clip whip, what do you do? Um, in that case, what I recommend is to switch igniters. Um, this time, instead of using the regular Estes starters, um, you can get either the Aerotech First Fire Minis, which ones are these right here, or the Estes Sonic, and they're pretty much the same thing. Um, but basically they have wires, long insulated wires on the back end. Okay, um, and this becomes really important if you don't have a clip whip or if you have a cluster like this one right here where I got three motors and they're really spread apart and there's no way I'm going to be able to twist them together. So in that case, I need to use one of these longer leads and then I put them in the same way with the plugs. And you got to separate the wires on the back end. Put this one on this side. Now the plugs don't... Okay, so I got two wires there. And then for my central one, I could either use a third one of those, or if I'm want to save a little bit of money, I can just use a regular Estes um, plug. I need the right color plug. Here's my plugs. I keep my plugs in this uh, little container so I can separate them quick. Okay, so I can put in this one in the middle and then just take these and then I can bundle them all together. Oops, that plug just fell out. I said these plugs don't hold with these Sonics very well, but they will. So then I can take these two wires, bundle them together, and then twist them to the Estes one in the center. Okay, you get the idea. So now I can just hook up the clips right to these bundles. And everything's insulated, so they'll um, you get a pretty good chance of not shorting anything out. Okay, so that's a three-engine cluster. Um, with a composite engine, it's pretty much the same thing. You're going to need long lead igniters. Again, the igniters that come with the um, Aerotech motors will work for clusters. Um, and it's again the same thing. You'll put your igniters in, and you gotta fish them all the way down to the bottom. There we go. Getting it started with a chore. Um, and then you're gonna take that rubber band that comes with it, and you fold the igniter over. Make sure that this, those go all the way down to the top. And you just take the rubber band and you just wrap it around there like that, and that holds it on. And then you take your next, next igniter. And 
two and then here's the third now these these uh, sonic igniters and the Estes uh, the Aerotech igniters are pretty much the same so um, I don't mind mixing them some igniters you don't want to mix um, like the first fire juniors make sure you have all first fire junior because you want them all to have pretty much the same resistance and these do so They'll all pretty much fire at the same time. It's easier to do when they're standed up. I'm just doing them upside down here. Okay, then you take each of the igniters, separate them. So you want one lead from each igniter. And you'll just twist them together. like that and then you just hook up your clips to them 12 volt system when you're doing Aerotech motors because uh, you really want them to fire hard and to fire with a lot of oomph um, so that is how you do multiple engines and if you're doing more than that five six seven motors same technique you want to use these um, the wires with, that are insulated that have extra length it gives you a lot of room to twist things around. So those are my secrets on clustering. Um, if you have any comments, uh, please send them to us at Apogee Rockets here on the YouTube channel or on our website. Uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Um, over here to the side, we have some extra videos that I think you're gonna enjoy. Um, and let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, Come shop at Apogee because we could really uh, appreciate your business and please refer a friend. Tell them about this video. Uh, so may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true. <laughs>